In this uh, talk, I'll uh, try to describe some of the work we have been doing in the area of nanocarbon. So, uh, this uh, talk, uh, I will just try to highlight what are the interesting issues and uh, I will uh, uh, leave some of the details out which can be uh, uh, discussed with me if needed later. All of you know about carbon uh, that uh, it has this two allotropic forms which we know for a very very long time. From, so from this uh, diamond and graphite what uh, was missing was some mysteries and this is the humanly intervention which really made the field explode. So from the interstellar dust it was seen that there are some structural lines which cannot be explained by the known elements we know. So theorists proposed that some of these lines might come from linear carbon chain. So in order to understand these lines, uh, this mystery of these lines, uh, there was an attempt to make a linear carbon chain by laser ablation of graphite and that laser ablation when it led to the mass spec gave rise to the discovery of C60. So the C60 discovery uh, came uh, around 1985 and uh, this led to a large activity in this area with this beautiful 7 angstrom molecule and 1996 was the Nobel Prize in Chemistry to the discoverer of this fullery. So when uh, this was there, in the same, uh, around the same time, one year later, in the art discharge process, uh, a group found, uh, led uh, by Japanese, Ijima and others, that you can form multi-wall carbon nanotubes. So these are concentric sheets of graphite with uh, uh, inter-tube uh, gap of about 3.4 angstrom, same as in graphite. And 93, saw the discovery of single wall carbon nanotube. So this single wall carbon nanotube is about uh, 1 or 2 nanometer and few micron long. So now 93 was the discovery of single wall nanotube and you all know that how it has changed the scene in the last uh, science scene in the last 10 years. Uh, it has enormous exceptional properties uh, be it mechanical properties be it electrical properties and so on. And now also in medicine and nano agriculture there are uh, applications. So this uh, nanotubes, it is no surprise that if you look at web of science, how many papers are appearing, what is the citation, it is really mind boggling. For a uh, single wall nanotube, uh, last, this year, uh, last year was 1400 papers and citations were about 40,000. So you can see and multi-wall also, it's a huge uh, activity. So not only in publications, but also in the market. So there is a tremendous market already and it is expected that 2011 will be one billion dollar market uh, in, uh, which will encompass composites, electronics, energy sectors and so on. So you can see from a simple discovery in 1991-93, in last 20 years, not only very exciting science has come, but it has also led to many, many applications. So in all this uh, 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 game, we started with three-dimensional carbon, we came to zero-dimensional carbon because it's a confined, it's a confined then we came to one dimensional carbon, namely nanotube. So what was missing in this happy family was two dimensional carbon. And what is a two dimensional carbon? A single sheet of carbon. So this is what was missing and this gap was unambiguously and unquestionably uh, answered by this uh, Manchester group where they used an extraordinarily simple technique of using scotch tape putting on the graphite 
peeling it off and then putting it on any substrate. That led to, I will show you, a enormous surge in the activity. So, 2004 was this paper in science and this year Nobel Prize went to these two people uh, from Manchester, Andre Guy and uh, Novoselov, 36 year old as of now, a remarkable uh, uh, explosion of activities and the uh, 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 citation reads on the web page for groundbreaking experiments regarding the two dimensional material graphene. So, within uh, six years of the discovery, uh, they have been uh, recognized by this Nobel Prize this year. So, now there are many other methods. This is the method which they launched. Now, you can produce by chemical vapor deposition of methane on copper or nickel. You can have uh, by chemical route, uh, 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 you can make col uh, colloidal suspension. You can heat silicon carbide. Also, you can uh, by that way you will get graphene and so on. So, there are lots of methods now where you can grow graphene on a large scale. Not only the mechanical exfoliation which was uh, demonstrated in 2004. So, since as I said there is a pedagogical component to this meeting. So, let me start by reminding what we already know for a two dimensional layer of carbon like in a graphene. So, you have two atoms per unit cell A and B. They are the same carbon, but they are uh, they form a unit cell. So, what you have is C2 hybridization and you form the sigma bond. So, what is of interest for all the key properties are this Pz orbitals of carbon which are the pi electrons. So, now uh, you can look at the band structure, what is the energy momentum relationship. This was done way back in 1948 and it was shown that without going into detail uh, that, that uh, you can write down the uh, uh, Schrodinger equation for the electrons, but then you can show in a very simple type minding picture that it really reduces to a Dirac equation which is for the effective uh, massless particle. But the most important thing is that the energy of this electron is linear in momentum at this uh, point in the Brunner zone. This linear uh, relationship is same as for photons, but now instead of velocity of light, you have the Fermi velocity. So, whatever you know of photons, question is what could be happening for electrons. So, for normal conventional metals and semiconductors, energy relationship is quadratic. Momentum is k, uh, energy is k square or t square over 2m. So, you can see that it has uh, the uh, Hamiltonian uh, is exactly that of the Dirac particle, but now what replaces the real spin of electron? Uh, here, it is replaced by a pseudo spin. Why? Because any electronic state at the Fermi level will have contributions from the A sublattice and the B sublattice. So, there is a pseudo spin operator, it is not the real spin which uh, replaces the actual spin of the photon and this is the Dirac equation. So, in graphene, you have massless uh, electrons, effective, uh, effective massless electrons with, uh, which move with a Fermi velocity. And there are many, many consequences of this simple fact which, uh, which are being explored. This is from this re uh, review article. I just uh, say that this is for a conventional semiconductor or a metal and this is for the graphene. Because of this, it is a high uh, school uh, textbook exercise to show that the density of states will be linear in energy. Again, many interesting consequences come as compared to a conventional 2D electron gas and this linearity also is uh, at the back of many interesting physics. Now, what is so exciting about graphene? We have been hearing for the last 8 years. First, of course, it is very strong but flexible. So, you can, it has been shown that this is the strongest material you can ever have and it is flexible. So, they took the graphene, they punched uh, the fist which is a nano, uh, which is a ASM tip and then they deform it. 
and then they return back, they retract, it recovers its shape. So, uh, in the science paper in 2008, these people showed that this is the strongest and the most flexible material. Diamond is strong, but it is not flexible. So, this is a very unique property. And another thing is that they have, uh, there is a very nice, uh, many, many manifestations of 2 plus 1 dimensional quantum electrodynamics. In the morning talk which was being given, QED was being discussed uh, in the context of high energy physics and uh, string theory. Here, uh, uh, whatever were the exotic phenomena described by relativistic quantum mechanics, people are trying to do those experiments in the laboratory on graphene. So, graphene is a single element laboratory for quantum electrodynamics and that is why it is so exciting. But also, these have a large mobility of this electron even at room temperature. Because of that, you can play quantum billiards. You can take a graphene sheet and shoot an electron into it. When you shoot it, it will not be a random walk. It will go like a bullet and return. This is the ballistic motion which occurs in graphene. So, in this paper, uh, they show beautiful experiments that the quantum billiard effect or quantum billiard slight things can uh, happen in uh, graphene coming from the ballistic transport. Now, you can also have a, a quantum uh, Hall effect because if you have a two dimensional electron gas, you know that quantum Hall effect was discovered in uh, other devices. It was shown in these devices even at room temperature. You don't need helium. So, even at room temperature, it has been shown uh, this nice exotic state in graphene. But more recently, it was shown that these electrons in graphene are not independent. They are talking to each other. Correlations are important. If the correlations are important, it is known that it should lead to fractional quantum polyphase, which was discovered in uh, other systems and that discovery was done last year. So, very nice properties of graphene are being explored in the quantum domain and non-quantum domain. Why? That is why it is making a great impact in physical and chemical sciences. Many, many applications are being uh, expected and being worked on. Uh, devices from the graphene, ultra high frequency devices because you have a ballistic transport. You can use it as a transmission electron microscope grid for drug delivery uh, of water insoluble compounds. You can make a graphene transparent sheet on a uh, glass and make it conducting. Glass is uh, transparent but not conducting which you need in solar, solar cell applications, liquid crystal display and so on. So, the material of choice there is indium tin oxide. You can replace that with graphene layer where the transmission is almost 85 percent and the conductivity is very high. So, you can make it into gas sensors, biosensors. I will show you resistive switching effects which have been discovered recently. I will give you our results on this many memory devices and so on. So, this is a very partial list of graphene applications in many areas. And no wonder there are patents already in last few years and this year the uh, 160 patents have been filed in 2009. And most of them are in applications, 55 percent, 18 percent in processing and 27 percent in synthesis. So, you can see that uh, not only the physics is exciting, which is uh, shown in this graph, that how many citations on graphene per year after the discovery of the effect. So, nanotubes were discovered, so you plot within 7 years of their discovery, this is the blue line. But graphene is the red line and already within 2 years, the citations is 25,000 per year. And the latest count as of last week, uh, which my student did, is that 2010, the citations are already 45,000 of papers on graphene. And the uh, papers are about 2,000 this year. And uh, this year is still not over, another month is there. So, you can see this huge explosion of activity, not only in the number of papers, 
also in citation is telling us that there is a exciting science and many many possible applications which people are uh, exploring and in all this demo carbon it is gratifying to see that the raman scattering which was discovered by sir raman in 1928 for which he got the nobel prize in 1930 has a very key player is a key player because the characterization and study of these materials is uniquely done by raman scattering so this uh, for example if you have a nanotube it has a phonon it has a vibration how does nanotube uh, vibrates that is a frequency that frequency you can measure in raman scattering so the frequency uh, uh, depends on the diameter of the tube so just by a simple experiment you can measure the diameter of single wall nanotube which is about 1 to 2 nanometer otherwise you have to do transmission electron microscope and asm and so on so this simple method tells you what is the diameter what is the purity of nanotubes and so on and nanotubes can be metallic as well as semiconductor so if you look at this high frequency modes which is related to the vibration of the carbon atoms on the nanotube this is very different if it is a metallic tube or a semiconductor tube so just by a simple experiment you can find out the diameter of the nanotube and the type of nanotube which you are making and using so this talk uh, i'll focus only on graphene uh, my group uh, works a lot uh, uh, on nanotubes and uh, 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 related uh, applications if they come but this talk since it is uh, uh, i thought instead of cluttering the whole talk with too many results let me just focus only on graphene and tell you what we are looking at and where uh, we are trying to understand so the first part of my talk is to show you how you can very trivially make very easily make a field effect transistor of a graphene which has been done but i'll tell you what is the new thing we have brought in and what you can do with it using a that you can make a very very simple the frequency multiplier you give the frequency of omega you will get two omega out from these devices because of the property of the i'll point out you can make resisting switching devices which are called memristors the resistance which is a memory then i'll tell you the second part that how you can use raman scattering and transport together to understand these devices why because you need to know what is limiting these devices what is the, the electron phonon coupling why electrons are getting scattered all those issues which come eventually in deciding the usefulness of a device you can do by raman scattering when the device working uh, under a microscope so you make a device working look at raman scattering in situ and try to understand so the physics of these devices is which we use to do raman uh, to this so this slide is to put on record uh, enormous work done by my graduate students in the last few and some of the publications which have details that uh, uh, anindya who is now in wiseman institute vishwanath who is just completing and uh, uh, siddharth vasu uh, sideshwara vasu who is doing graphene made by chemical group you can make tons of graphene now using chemical group so we have been uh, using those and so on so but just let me start by telling you some of the results so when you make graphene and put it on a substrate you can do asm you can show it a single layer but the color contrast is very specific if it is a single layer or a bilayer so how do you make this device the simplest group known to mankind scotch tape which they discovered take a scotch tape from your uh, from your drawer put it on hopg which is a highly oriented graphite peel it off and then that tape you touch it on the si sio to substrate if you do it correctly watch it under a microscope you will locate many many single layers many bilayers trilayers and so on and then you go ahead and make devices so this is the way they showed in 2004 there are youtube uh, videos on this you can uh, uh, i'm sure youngsters here 
are on the YouTube all the time. You can just put a keyword graphene fabrication and you will get beautiful videos on it and this is very very easy to do. So when you do Rama scattering on this, the uniqueness is that not only you have a G mode which is a characteristic of graphite or graphene but you have this mode called a 2D mode. I will not go into detail. This is a mode which has no business to be in this spectrum. It is not Raman allowed. So the, this is a double of this mode which is even absent. So the first order cousin is absent but the second order cousin which is supposed to be much weaker is having a huge intensity. So there is a nice physics behind it and this gives you a number of layers in the sample. So this is a characteristic feature of single layer. When you make a bilayer, what you will see is this mode is similar, but this mode which is one peak splits into four peaks. So immediately you can make out whether the sample which you have identified is a single layer or a bilayer. You have a tri-layer, this signature changes. So the number of layers have uniqueness in the fingerprints in Raman spectrum. And this is what uh, uh, people in graphene field uh, use. What is this mode? I will not go into detail. This is a mode not at the Brunner zone. So do the Raman scattering will appreciate that uh, any high, uh, any uh, other mode requires impurities and so on. I will not go into but the 2D mode is not symmetric out and uh, it has information on the uh, band structure of graphene and hence on the number of layers. So you make a device. How do you make a device? The, oh, I think it is getting cut. It is just written field effect transistor. It is a canonical device you make uh, uh, first. And using that you can make many other devices. So this is the hydrogen atom problem of uh, electronics. So you put the graphene between the two electrodes. This distance is about four, 2 to 4 microns. Put it on a uh, gate which is called SiO2 and apply the voltage, the gate voltage. So it is a 3 terminal device where you control the conductivity of graphene using the gate voltage. So you, uh, this is the off state and this is the on state. So this is called hole doping, this is called electron doping and here the voltages are about 100 volts. So by applying this voltage, you can change the Fermi level in the graphene or the doping in the graphene. So you can dope electron dope or a hole dope. And the devices have many issues which I said, what is the electron phonon coupling and so on. All these are issues which have to be understood for any new material. What we have done is a small trick. Uh, uh, it is known that uh, in the literature you can do electrochemical gating. So instead of using 300 nanometer of gate, what we have done is we don't use this. We put a drop of solid electrolyte. It is a polymer with lithium perchlorate. Now here when you apply a gate which is a platinum wire or a gold wire between these two electrodes, you form a divide layer near the graphene, means ions come nearby. Now the divide layer thickness, you all know, is 1 nanometer or so. So instead of 300 nanometer of gate, you have 1 nanometer now. So whatever you could do with 100 volts, now you can do with less than a volt. And you can do a heavy doping of this graphene. So the interesting thing is, this electrochemical doping allows a very large doping also, this electrolyte, which is a solid electrolyte, it's a thin layer, it is transparent, it's optically transparent. So you can do Raman scattering when the device is working. So you do, oh, I, have, I have a slide here, or oh, maybe come later, when the device is working, you can do Raman scattering. So the, the punchline of this is that the top gated uh, electrochemical gating, where the device layer acts like a gate, instead of 300 nanometer of SiO2 makes the life very simple and with 1 volt or less you can uh, change the uh, Fermi level. So this is what we have been doing. So once you do this, you can plot source drain uh, current as a function of gate voltage. Please see it is not 100 volt, it is one minus 1 volt to plus 1 volt. 
this is the whole doping, these are the electrodes. And you can show what is the resistivity of this device, you can fit to a model, we do that and you can show that this device and at room temperature had about 300 centimeter square per mole second. So this device has some very uniqueness. What is the uniqueness? That it, has, it is symmetric around the Dirac point. This is the Dirac point, no doping. So you put hole doping or electron doping and it is quite symmetric. Because and also this is happening for few volts. This is the back gate, same device. This is the, uh, the top gate. Now, the important property of a device is transconductance, DIS over D, uh, DVG. If you want that to be high, here it is nano Siemens uh, in the back gate. But in our way of doing, it is micro Siemens. So a very simple small voltage has a uh, huge change in the transconductor. So this is one uh, beauty. And second is, it is symmetric around this. Whether you go holes or electrons, it is symmetric because of this linear dispersion and the linear density of space with energy. So this feature we have exploited recently in the following way. It is known uh, recently that people have used graphene to make frequency multiplier. So here it is done with the top gate or uh, top gate using atomic layer deposition using some hafnium oxide and so on and the uh, other way. So what is the idea? Let me give you the idea. So the idea is that if you operate this device at this point and you apply the gate voltage, not a DC but an AC of a certain frequency, you can easily show, I will try to show that, that the output will be double in frequency. Why? When the uh, uh, cycle is positive, it is doing hole doping, and when the cycle is negative, as uh, negative is doing hole doping, positive is doing electron doping. And the fact that this graph is symmetric around electron and hole, you will get the doubling of the frequency because twice it is doing it in any cycle, positive or negative. And if you do here, you can show that the output will be same frequency which is in phase and this will be out of phase. So, so a very simple device gives you a frequency multiplier in phase and out of phase response. So what is done? You make a device, put the polymer electrolyte. And in this gate, you apply a AC voltage instead of a uh, uh, DC voltage. So DC voltage means where you want to operate and this is what the frequency of interest. And you look at the output here and this output you can easily show will have the frequency doubling. So you let us see the experiment. For example, this is the device, uh, top, uh, our device. You put it here a frequency of 800 hertz and what you get is this red graph which is 1600 hertz and if you are at this point you get the same frequency. So a very simple graphene frequency multiplier and many many variants of this idea are possible with these devices and this is what Vishwanath is doing. Uh, in, uh, so you can show this and you can also show that if you operate it slightly close to this you will show I will not have time that not only you get the same frequency you also get the double frequency. So it depends on what you want to get. So you can get frequency doubling, you can get in phase peak output and out of phase output as well as both the frequencies present. This is what uh, you can do. The second device which I just want to discuss which is again very interesting is called uh, uh, resistive ramp or memory stuff. So what is this device? So here if you look at this IEEE spectrum uh, uh, website, they call it the greatest invention of the last 25 years. And there are a lot of press hype, Time magazine has uh, called it the best invention of 2008 and so on. So there is a lot of hype, there is a lot of reality. So let me tell you what this is hype. So this is a, again a high school graph. Uh, which has been uh, uh, discussed in this paper but with a very important prediction. So this paper predicted that you have any circuit parameters, high school, what are the things? Charge, current, voltage, magnetic flux. We all know that. We grew up with that. You have voltage and current, you get a resistance. You have voltage and charge, uh, uh, you get a capacitance. 
you get uh, magnetic flux and uh, current, you get inductance. So what was missing here was this connection between uh, magnetic flux and charge. Is there a connection? Because if you want by uh, analogy, what would be possible? And it was predicted here, yes, it is a possibility, no uh, fundamental physics rules it out. And what you will, if they showed that the voltage will be proportional to current like a resistance, but that resistance will depend on the charge trap. So it will be having a resistance which will have memory. So even if you switch off the voltage, the resistance will remain the same or you can change it by changing the input voltage. And this is what was shown, uh, it's called the resistive ram switching. So the idea is that you can first uh, plot current versus voltage. You have a low current, this is the ohmic law, but suddenly the device goes to a high current. So you now have a device, low current to high current, which means high resistance to low resistance. And now once you form it, you can see next time when you do, you can show that you can have on-off device and this de uh, device will remain there unless you uh, apply another voltage. So this is uh, called a unipolar or a bipolar, I will not go into detail, but the idea is the most of the devices of this, uh, there is a huge uh, action in this front, you, it's a very simple de device, you put bottom electrode, you put the material of interest, transition metal oxide and you put a top electrode which are here. And using the, the voltage between this and this, you can make this resistor or the, uh, the resistive switching devices. And you can see that this is a billion dollar industry with lot of players uh, in this uh, game uh, to, make, uh, to have the uh, commercial application of RAM or resistor. So it's a very, very uh, exploding field like graphene. Uh, uh, for this. So, uh, so what we have done is a small uh, experiment but with an idea, we make a graphene device, we put it on a conducting plate, this is the graphene layer and then we put a electrode and when we apply the voltage, what we show, I will just show you the results, that if you have, you look at the red graph, the current versus voltage, current jumps here, you get a huge current, uh, almost 1 milliampere, you come back and it goes to again the high resistance state. Now when you go from the high resistance state, come back, come back and again it goes to the low resistance state. So you can now switch between high resistance and low resistance as you wish. But the beauty is, can you do with a pulse laser, pulse uh, uh, thing. So what, uh, what is done, if you apply a voltage which is 8 volt pulse for 1 millisecond. What will it do? You look at this, 8 volt is a high resistance device and when you apply 4 volt, it is this device. The fact that this is our device has a memory, you will lock the memory there and this is what we show in this experiment. So here you have a 8 volt, uh, it switches from here to the high resistance and it will remain off for a very long time if you don't do anything with time. But if you come back and apply another voltage of 4 volt, it will come back to this thing. And this you can do repeated switches. So what we have shown is that it's a very, very stable device. And this device uh, resistance ratio, on off ratio is 10 is power 5. It's an enormous contrast with this graphene devices. So same thing we did with nanotubes I will not go into. And what is the physics? Uh, we believe it is related to some nano cracks which are playing a role which have been invoked in uh, other experiments but uh, we still don't have a microscopic mechanism of this device. So uh, at, this, at this stage let me uh, uh, tell you the third part of my talk that once you make this field effect transistor how do you understand them and I mentioned that uh, we use Raman scattering along with the transport measurements to understand. So what do we do? So we make a device, uh, this is uh, 5 micron uh, graphene, uh, uh, size graphene, we put two electrodes, gold uh, for example, gold. These are called source and drain. Now this is put on a SiO2 and this is the gate electrode. So in uh, past as I said, 
you can people are applying the back gate between source and the gate now as i mentioned few minutes back what we apply is the top gate so you make this device put a, a single drop of this polymer called polyethylene oxide with lithium perchlorate this uh, electrolyte is used commercially also in lithium ion batteries and so on so this you put a drop and you have a electrode inserted or if you can make a electrode in the, uh, by other means also and apply a gate voltage so what happens when you apply a gate voltage ions from the polymer will come near graphene and they will form a debye layer this is what i mentioned so one nanometer thick debye layer or so acts like a gate and that is what switches the device from an off state to a on state once your device is working at command you can fill it with electron or both as you wish and reversible now we want to do uh, what these electrons are doing to the device which means to the phonon so phonons in any serial are the characteristic signature so what we do is we look at raman scattering when the device is working at different voltages so we put different amount of doping and look raman scattering we look at the frequency of two modes which i mentioned around 15 80 and uh, 2700 wave number and they change dramatically with voltage so the next graph shows that this frequency when the uh, electrons are not there if there is no doping of graphene you have uh, dirac point there are no fermi level is at the dirac point this is the frequency 1582 but moment you do you get a huge increase 30 wave number increase within one voltage completely reversible if you bring the voltage back but the 2d mode which is at another point it hardens with hole doping softens with electron doping so you can see that the nature of the doping does not affect the g mode but it affects the 2d mode and combination of this you can use to get the doping and the nature of doping in your sample but this is not what we want only we want to know why this is happening and what information we can get and for this i need to appeal to quantum mechanics what does quantum mechanics say quantum mechanics says that you have what or the the any uh, particle as a phonon it is dressed by the electron so these are called quasi particles in condensed matter physics so this dressing of a uh, phonon making into a quasi particle by because of electron dressing is has all the information on this electron phonon coupling how electrons are coupled to phonons or how they get uh, uh, scattered so the idea is that if you have a, uh, a band structure these are all electrons filled to valence band no electrons here now what quantum mechanically uh, physically you are doing a phonon is able to make a transition across the valence band to the conduction band this action leads to the dressing up of a phonon so the phonon frequency can change phonon lifetime can change now what happens when they start doping these transitions will be forbidden because this uh, there is no state available so the simple physical picture tells you that when you put uh, doping when you put electrons or holes some of the phonon assisted transition will be blocked this blocking changes the uh, dressing up of a phonon it has to uh, readjust and because of that the frequency changes lifetime changes so this is analyzed in the uh, uh, quantum uh, uh, quantum mechanics language and give by this whole process which i will not go into detail you get a very important parameter called uh, electron phonon coupling which means how strongly are they coupled how much uh, is the effect of this scattering so this quantitative information you can now get from these structures and this is what we have been doing in single layer bi layer and so on so there is a i will not uh, uh, elaborate much but uh, again these are matter of detail if your graphene has defect what will happen so the defect again have a very unique role in deciding the electron mobility and again we analyze this problem using raman scattering so i will not go into detail but tell you that defect have a unique role to play if it was bilayer it will be different why 
Because the band structure of BioWare is different. Why should it be different? Again, for the sake of students, these are two layers now, two graphing layers. Obviously, they will talk to each other. Moment they talk, you will have, or you will immediately see that you will not have one valence band and one conduction, or one conduction band and one valence band. Now you will have two conduction band and two valence band because these two layers are interacting, and this uh, 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 energy will depend on how strongly they interact. But you want to measure them because nobody tells you what is the number. All this can be again done using Raman scattering, photo emission experiments, and so on. And we have shown recently that when you make a device out of bilayer, you get very interesting effects which are not the same as single layer. So let me not go into detail, but uh, tell you that results are different for single layer and bilayer. And this uh, all this uh, quantum uh, uh, way of looking at it, which I pointed out, helps us to make quantitative predictions on this coupling between uh, these layers and so on. You can have another thing, which again is for curiosity. You are measuring I versus B of a device. Is it always ohmic? Is it always linear? You can show that by playing with the gate voltage, you can get very, very non-linear graph. So IV cannot, need not be ohmic. And the physics of that is that if you play with the gate voltage and source drain voltage, the uh, the graphene need not be uniformly doped. It is not that the entire graphene is electron doped, entire graphene is p-doped and so on. You can have a situation, half of it can be p-doped, half of it can be n-doped. This means you can have a p-n junction without doing any chemistry uh, in the graphene layer by playing with the gate voltage. Indeed we did that and how do we confirm? Again you do Raman scattering as a function of distance. So this is micro Rama. So your spatial resolution is high. You do Raman scattering when the device is working along the length. Look at this. If you do Raman scattering at this point, 1582 uh, frequency. Same device, same condition, you do it here, it is 1593. And quantitative analysis tells you what is the uh, 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 profile of the carrier in this layer. So this is something again uh, you can do quantitatively. The last part of my uh, uh, presentation is to tell you how to make 5 cent devices. Somebody said 13 cent for helium and so on. It's a 5 cent device. How? You can make now graphene in sun by chemical work. So you can start with uh, uh, graphite, you can exfoliate by chemical method. So these layers go uh, separate. You can, this is, uh, then you can treat it with acid which is called graphene oxide. You can oxidize it. Then you can do the sonication, all these layers come out in a solution. These layers have a lot of oxygen attached, oxygen group. Those things you can again reduce and make graphene, single layer or bilayer. This is called reduced graphene oxide because they still have some oxygen. You can make them in as much quantity as you want. Now you can make two electrodes in the lab. This is about a, a 3 micron gap. I put the drop of that graphene here, put it uh, and apply a RF field, a radio frequency field for one minute. Once you do that, for the nice physics reason, the graphene comes and deposits here. And this device is, uh, it shows conductivity, it shows resistance versus temperature and this resistance variation is exactly same as a single layer mechanically exfoliated graphene. So we confirm that is a single layer graphene made by chemical route and sure enough we do the gate voltage and it shows a hole doping and electron doping. Again you can use these devices for uh, sensors application and for understanding the physics. So now you can make this device from the chemically produced graphene and you can really make them in huge quantities at a very low cost. So this again some features which I will not discuss. Another interesting thing is this graphene is on this substrate which is SI, SiO2 on SI. Obviously substrate has some effect because it will influence graphene. So there is a big effort to suspend this graphene on two bridges. So the graphene should not touch the substrate. That was the way it was done to get high mobility graphene which led to fractional quantum modifier. You can do that. So this is a graph. Uh, 
uh, SCM from my lab. This is the graphene on these two bridges and there is a gap here. And this is done again by uh, etching method. So now you can uh, make devices which need not be on a substrate. So again, uh, uh, this also acts like a cantilever and uh, NEMS device. So a lot of things you can do with this. So I just close this talk just with a humbling thought that the next time, uh, especially students, when you use pencil and leave a mark on a pencil, please be respectful. Because what you are leaving behind is graphene and what you are leaving behind is enormous physics capability on that single or bilayer graphene. So this is something which makes us feel humble and with this I thank you very much. Thank you Professor Asut for a very interesting talk. We have some time for questions. Yes. A substitute for ITO layer with graphene layer, uh, is it now commercially available? And uh, what would be the stability? Uh, be this is not my work. There are beautiful papers which have shown this uh, highly conducting and transparent uh, layer. They have achieved, uh, which we have also achieved. Once you make chemically produced graphene, you can spread on any place you want. Okay, so people have grown uh, this graphene layer on 6 inch glass. Resistivity is low, but transmission is still 85 percent. If 85 percent is acceptable for some application, it is fine. But if you want 90 percent or 95 percent, then you will have to work on it. What about stability? Will it be stable? Yeah, very stable. In electrolytes, uh, strong acidic and alkaline. Carbon is highly yeah. stable. You can beat it up. Okay. Thank you. My next question would be that if we have a graphene layer and we deposit some oxide over it. Now, according to your uh, experiments, can we supply electron and holes yeah. to make that oxide grown over graphene P-type and N-type in that way? So, I don't know if it has been done, but I don't see any reason not to. I mean, making oxides sure. grown over graphene. Yeah. If there is a good reason to do, you should do it. Yeah. And there is, because people have grown, I did not uh, elaborate on it. People are making graphene ferroelectric heterostructures. And some of the ferroelectric can be liquid crystal, some of them can be oxide. Now, this uh, sandwich, ferroelectric graphene, has very interesting memory properties. Uh, the uh, retention of whatever you write and this is what is being done. Oh.